Well, we didn't have Thursday Night Football last night, but it's kind of an advantage to me because I get to do the weekly picks video with the added information of the Friday injury report and an extra day of news. So I feel a little bit more confident than normal picking these games, even though this is a lot of chalk once again. Um, but uh, yeah, so I, I felt spoiled having, you know, doubleheader Monday nights and Tuesday night games and Thursday night games, and we didn't have one last night. So it felt like a little uh, a little wake up call about the reality of the situation. But we're churning on into week six. So let's begin. If you're new here, this is the board. We're going to pick all the games for the week, or at least I am and uh, see how this goes. So uh, if you have a difference of opinion, you know, let me know in the comments below. That's where we always have our fun, exciting conversations. Uh, so without further ado, let's begin. We're going to kick things off with the Texans and the Titans. And um, this, this game doesn't really intrigue me all that much. I think the Titans should handle their business. Uh, if they play anything like they did against the Bills, I think this one will be over pretty quickly. Uh, Deshaun Watson, you know, is doing the best that he can to navigate through the turmoil that is the Houston Texans 2020 season. And uh, I think that not having Bill O'Brien in the locker room anymore or as a part of this organization at all is uh, pretty key for his development going forward. Um, I, I think uh, Bill O'Brien was probably more toxic in the environment than people would like to admit. And uh, now that he's gone, uh, the Texans should flourish. But at the same time, this is still a really poorly built team. Um, because of the guy that got fired, go figure. And it's going to take a while for them to be competitive. Now, they're 1-4, and four, and uh, they'll probably win a few more games this season, but I don't know if they can beat the Titans. Uh, the Titans look like they're just on fire right now. And, um, yeah, I really have no reason to pick against Tennessee, so I'm just going to do it. And I'm going to call the Titans for the win uh, in Week 6. Moving on, we have the Bengals and the Colts. This one's kind of tough because, you know, the Colts are playing uninspired offense right now. Uh, Phillip Rivers should absolutely <laughs> be benched in any other situation, but the fact that the Colts are probably looking at trying to go for one of the final playoff spots is what's going to keep them in the starting role. I think once uh, this team gets out of playoff contention, if it does, uh, you got to see what you have in Jacob Eason. I would at least throw him to the Wolves and see how he does. I think you know, I think Jacoby Brissett is a proven commodity. If you're still trying to win games and you need better quarterback play, he's the guy you would bring in in the situation where wins still matter. But if nothing matters and the season's gone, I think Jacob Eason uh, is just, you know, waiting in the wings uh, sooner rather than later. The team's pretty banged up on offense, too. You know, they've lost Michael Pittman Jr., um, Paris Campbell, Marlon Mack. So it's tough, you know, in that aspect. The offensive line is also sort of, uh, regressing a little bit compared to last year. So it just hasn't happened. Phillip Rivers is just throwing up duds. And uh, thankfully, this defense is pretty good. Without it, they'd probably be in a lot worse situation than they are now. On the Bengals' side, the, the offense is doing good. The defense is bad. Um, Joe Burrow is making some you know rookie mistakes uh, deeper into the season. The offensive line isn't doing him any favors. And I think A.J. Green is probably done. Um, and I don't think he's going to be playing in this game. But at the same time, I, I feel like my gut instinct is telling me Joe Burrow over Phillip Rivers. So I'm going to go with the Cincinnati Bengals to win this game. Next, <laughs> boy, we got an intriguing one here. 0-5 Falcons uh, come to the 1-4 Minnesota Vikings. So Raheem Morris is your new head coach. Dan Quinn has now been fired. Um... Uh, Julio Jones has been upgraded to healthy, at least uh, the, for the time being, as this as of this recording. And I don't think Matt Ryan is quite done. He's played some pretty crappy football, but I don't think it's all his fault. Uh, I think the Falcons have an edge here. I think their offense is better. Um, it's more high octane. Uh, Todd Gurley is actually having a pretty decent season. Uh, you wouldn't know about it really if you just kind of looked at uh, at them from an outsider's perspective. And the fact that I don't think that this stable of young corners that the Vikings have is going to be able to do much of anything against Calvin Ridley, Julio Jones, and everybody else that they throw out there, tight end included. On the other side, um, the Vikings are looking at starting uh, rookie guard Ezra Cleveland, uh, possibly, now that Drew Samia has missed uh, two consecutive practices. So I think it might be Ezra, Ezra Cleveland time in Minnesota. And that's a little bit scary uh, in and of the fact that on the other side of that line, you're going to be having Grady Jarrett, uh, Grady Jarrett on the interior for the Falcons. And there is no reason to think that they're going to be able to do anything other than double-team Grady Jarrett. So 
um, Kirk Cousins is going to have some trouble, <laughs> as he has been uh, throughout the year, with pass protection. So if we get into a shootout, I don't like the Vikings' chances. And I'm just going to you know, throw a bone to the Falcons, the fact that they've got the new head coach, and the fact that that creates a spark. I called it last week for the Texans. Firing Bill O'Brien would give them a spark, get them a win, and it happened. I'm going to do the same thing here. Bet against my own team, and I'm going to go with the Atlanta Falcons to win their first game of the season and just throw uh, myself and the rest of the Vikings community into chaos. Moving on to the Broncos and the Patriots. Doesn't look like this one's going to get played um, with the uh, added... Uh, positive test by the Patriots today. There was one positive, and then there was a second one they were waiting on. As of this recording, I haven't heard anything. Um, but it looked like there was going to be some healthy returns uh, with Cam Newton, Drew Locke. Um, Damian Harris had a breakout, not a breakout game, but a decent game, you know, 17 carries for 100 yards in their previous contest uh, where they had to suffer through poor quarterback play with Brian Hoyer and Jarrett Stidham. So if this game gets played, I'm going to give it to the Patriots. Even if it gets push, pushed back, I'd probably give it to the Patriots. Um, it, it's tough to see how the Broncos pull together um, a, a win against Bill Belichick. I don't think they're going to be able to do that with as depleted as this roster has been due to injuries. And the fact that Melvin Gordon also had a DUI, so his you know availability and status is up in the air. And it was poor timing on his part to do that because Philip Lindsay, I think, is uh, ready to play. Moving on to the Washington football team and the New York Giants. Uh, we all saw the great return of Alex Smith last week, but I think that that was a one-off. Uh, Kyle Allen should be healthy again, and he will be the starter. And uh, we are going up against the New York Giants, who showed signs of life against the Cowboys. So it's it depends how you want to look at that. Do you want to look at that, that the Giants um, you know, found themselves against the Cowboys, or it's just the Cowboys' defense is just that bad? And <clears throat> I'm kind of in the in the latter camp with that. I think the Cowboys' defense is just that bad. They're going to make just about everybody that they play look good on offense this year. So Daniel Jones still has his problems, and this offense still has its problems. Defense not great either. But at the same time, outside of Terry McLaren and Antonio Gibson, I don't know what the Washington football team's offense really has to offer. They've been trying to target Logan Thomas as much as possible, but he just can't get separation. So um, I have to give the edge, and I can't believe I'm doing it, to the New York Giants. I'm going to pick the Giants to win their first game. So I'm taking two winless teams, the Falcons and the Giants, and I'm chalking them up for a W this week. Whew. All right, Ravens and Eagles. <laughs> that, that took a lot of energy just to pick the Giants. Like, I'm depleted now. I need a nap. Uh, Ravens and Eagles. This is not looking good for the Eagles this week. It wasn't looking good earlier in the week for them either, but the official Friday uh, injury report is out, and they'll be missing Lane Johnson. Uh, he has been ruled out for this game. They've had six different offensive line starter combinations in, in, in the last seven games. I believe that's what the stat is, and that's not good. You need continuity on the offensive line, and as poorly as Carson Wentz has been playing, being without uh, you know, your starting pass protectors or your starting offensive linemen and missing weapons like Deshaun Jackson, who has been ruled out for this week again, and Alshon Jeffrey, who is just never coming back, apparently. Um, that This is why the struggles continue. And against a Ravens team that is on top of its game, I don't see any reason to pick against them. I don't think the Eagles can pull this one off. The Ravens should take care of business, so I'm going to pick them. Now, the marquee matchup of the week, if I look at the board here, well, Packers and Bucks, but uh, Browns and Steelers feels like this is going to be phenomenal. Um, I may be overselling this one a little bit because there are weaknesses on both teams. Uh, Roethlisberger's deep ball is absent right now, I guess you could say, and um, the Browns are a little bit banged up, especially on defense. They've got a lot of injuries, so um, <clears throat> the, the Steelers are going to be missing on offense Deontay Johnson this week, but I don't think that hurts too much at all because they've still got a slew of weapons that they can rely on. Uh, the ever-reliable Juju Smith-Schuster. Uh, they've got Chase Claypool, who broke out against the Eagles. Um, you know, good tight end set with Ebron and McDonald. And then, of course, they've always got James Washington, who can take the top off the defense. And there's also the stable of running backs that never seems to uh, be one-trick ponies. James Conner, Benny Snell, and Jalen Samuel. So I'm going to have to give the edge to the Steelers because um, the Browns are just uh, really a really banged-up defense right now. 
Um, they're probably going to have to play a lot of Anderson Dejo, and Anderson Dejo has been so terrible that he has initiated the fans to take it into their own hands and create a petition uh, to get him out of town. So that tells you how his play on the field has been. So um, I, I think this defense is just going to be too good against Cleveland, I, especially with the, um, uh, the illness to Odell Beckham Jr. doesn't worry me at all. The rib injury to Baker Mayfield does, um, you know, as, as tough as he thinks he is, or maybe he is, there's, you know, this is still a scary defensive front for the Pittsburgh Steelers, one of the more terrifying ones in the league that is playing really, really, really well. So if they get out of the situation where, the, you know, the Stefanski offense is run first, run some more, and then once everybody's tired, run it again. Uh, if they have to rely on Baker Mayfield to, you know, chuck out this win, I don't know if they're going to be able to do that. He seems to be like, you know, every once in a while, one of those blue moon type of guys that has a good game. Like every now and then you get Kirk Cousins who, you know, he puts a whole game together. Once in a while he can do that, but I don't think he can do it against this defense. Uh, I'm going to take Steelers for the win. Next, we have the Panthers and the Bears. I don't have my Panthers card. Uh, well, it went somewhere. Um, I'm, I'm going to pick the Panthers in this one. Uh, Matt Rule has just been doing a phenomenal job uh, with everything that he's doing. That's where it is. It was stuck behind the Steelers banner. So I'm taking the Panthers for this one because Matt Rule has just done a phenomenal job. I mean, early coach of the year candidate possibility. Um, getting the most out of his team. Like As I've said before in previous videos, I thought this defense was too young to compete. It's turned Robbie Anderson into a wide receiver one. They've, re they've really not missed Christian McCaffrey at all. Mike Davis has just done fine as a stand-in. Um, yeah, I like the Panthers. I still think the Bears are fraudulent. They've uh, backed themselves into a couple wins this season that they shouldn't have, uh, i.e. the Detroit game and probably the Bucks game as well. So I, I don't know. I think the Bears aren't, aren't a realistic 4-1 team, so I think that they're probably going to lose. And then the Panthers are, are the real surprise of this season, I guess. All right, moving on to the Lions and Jaguars. This game doesn't intrigue me at all. I, I, I'm not interested at all. I'm going to go with the Lions for the sheer fact that uh, Kenny Galladay is back and healthy, and that is going to stretch the field uh, for this team. The Jaguars are also pretty banged up. I think DJ Chark and Josh Allen might miss this game. So uh, I, like the, I like the Lions better. Their average depth target uh, before Kenny Galladay came back was hovering around 8, and now that he's back, it's hovering around 10. So I think the offense is just going to be that much better against the defense um, that isn't quite ready to handle it. So if Matt Patricia gets out of his own way, this should be a win for Detroit, barring anything ridiculous that happens. Jets and Dolphins. You may think that I'd not be interested in this game, but I am. Uh, for, the, for the fact that there are rumors that uh, people are calling to trade for Quinn and Williams. So maybe that's something that happens. Le'Veon Bell is gone. So now we get uh, a healthy dose of Frank Gore and uh, LaMichael Pirine as uh, Joe Flacco gets his second straight start. Um, this Jets team is just in shambles, and I, there's really nothing new to say that I haven't said already for the first month of the season that's going to change anything. And we're just waiting for the <laughs> we're just waiting for the merciless end of 2020 for the New York Jets. Um, I'm going to take the Dolphins because the Dolphins and Ryan Fitzpatrick just dropped 40 on the defending NFC champions. And um, there's enough magic, I think, left in Fitzmagic uh, to do that one more time against a defense that's really bad. Now, I say that, but at the same time, take into consideration that it's a divisional game, and divisional games are usually wild, because these are the teams you see the most. They're the teams that you know about the most, because you play them the most. So there's, also, there's always this aspect of the Dolphins falling back down to earth a little bit, not putting up 40. Maybe, you know, they do a pedestrian 21 or something like that, but... Uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick is going to do enough to win the game, and he's going to do enough to keep Tua Tungavailoa on the bench, despite my best wishes. Packers and Bucks feels like another marquee game, just like the Browns and the Steelers. I'm going to go with the Packers, uh, because I believe that Aaron Rodgers is just that good this year, and uh, the offensive line is not doing Tom Brady any favors in Tampa, and uh, Tampa has also lost a little bit of an edge on their defense with uh, Vita Vey going on IR with a broken leg. So the Bucks defense is still good, <clears throat> but uh, um, the Packers are going to be getting a lot of their pieces back this week, and that is including Devontae Adams. So I think the Packers will be at full strength. They'll take care of business. This should be an entertaining game. 
Uh, but I like Aaron Rodgers to win this one. Um, not handily like they did their last game, but I think that this should be a good game for Green Bay and um, you know Tampa Bay will keep that will keep up as best they can. Moving on to the Rams and the 49ers. The, the 49ers have a question at quarterback now. How much longer do they put up with Jimmy Garoppolo? It remains to be seen. I, I don't have much faith in it anymore. It was a nice experiment, it, you know, good try, but I don't think you're ever going to win much of anything with him at the helm. And then you can't really go to Nick Mullins because he's injured as well and he's not supposed to be the starter. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's, it's questionable. I think the Rams are just doing much better. There's also, there's also the possibility this is a mirage by the Rams because they've played uh, the NFC, uh, the NFC East uh, through most of their schedule and the NFC East is straight garbage. So the, the Rams could be fraudulent. It, it's possible. So this will be a test for them, if you will. The 49ers aren't great, but they're, they're not NFC East garbage. Um, so yeah, and plus this is a divisional game, as we've already said. Possibilities are endless, but I'm going to go with the Rams. Two remaining games. We've got the uh, doubleheader Monday night, which is fantastic. So we get a game at 5 o'clock on a Monday night. Fantastic. Love it. Please do this more. Chiefs and Bills. Bills are coming off an embarrassing loss to the Texas, or the uh, Titans, excuse me, where they got dropped 40 on. And uh, they look like they were just not prepared. Now, the Bills are a little bit banged up on defense. And, you know, you're used to Tredavious White and others being out there. And then you got to throw out Josh Norman, who just sucks at this point in his career. There's just no way that you want to do that realistically. And uh, they need to get John Brown back so they have somebody that can take the top off the defense, um, which for some reason they didn't have Gabriel Davis or Stephon Diggs doing. So I think I think that was just one of those games where they shoot themselves in the foot enough times and uh, they don't have the players that they need in key spots to be able to do what they want to do. So that is you're going to be how the Bills lose games going forward. Against the Chiefs, a little bit harder. Um, this is the premier team in the league. Um, Le'Veon Bell won't be a factor. I believe he can't participate. He has to go through uh, five days of uh, consecutive, consecutive five days of negative COVID tests before he can join the team. So we don't probably don't see him for a couple weeks. Um, but he doesn't really improve the offense all that much because the offense was already really good to begin with. Um, I'm going to go with, uh, I'm going to go with my gut instinct here and say it's going to be the Chiefs. Once again, no real reason to pick against them. They'll probably be hungry after they, uh, they didn't get embarrassed by the Raiders, but they got surprised by the Raiders who scored 40 on them. So it's going to be the battle of which team wants it more after losing and getting scored 40 on. So that's an interesting storyline. Last game of the day, of the week, we have the Cardinals and the Cowboys, which takes on a new interesting toll because instead of Dak Prescott, we get Andy Dalton for the rest of the season in Dallas. And so this will be Andy Dalton versus Kyler Murray. And I'm going to give the edge to the Cardinals because I don't believe that that Cowboys defense is worth a damn. And I don't understand how they're going to be even begin to be able to contain a, a you know, a, a different kind of, you know, talented quarterback like Kyler Murray. So I think Kyler Murray is finally going to have one of those bounce back games. You know, statistically he's been fine, but it's been pretty ugly um, aside from the first two weeks. So I think this will be a, a great game for the Cardinals. Uh, they did put Chandler Jones on IR, so that's something to keep an eye on. And, uh, you know, it, it looks like everything else will be click running on all cylinders for the offense against the defense. That is just really, really bad. There's no other way to say it. I think Andy Dalton will be fine. I don't think the offense is going to change all that much. If they do panic, uh, we will know about it immediately on their first two drives because it's if they start handing the ball off to Ezekiel Elliott a bunch of times, then we know that they have concerns about Andy Dalton. But if they keep aggressive and they keep throwing the ball on first and second down, then we'll know that they're comfortable with him for the remainder of the season. So those are the picks. Those are the explanations. Um, that's going to do it for this video. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next one.